this is Angela. We are out here on the beach reading some super fun little stories. So I have here Speedy Ghost Crab, A Tale of a Beach Dweller. It is by Suzanne Tate and illustrated by James Melvin. Speedy Ghost Crab lived in a sandy home behind the ocean. His home was a deep hole that he dug on a sandy beach. The hole was called a burrow. Speedy could run fast to it and be safe from enemies like hungry raccoons. When helpful humans came to the beach, Speedy again would speed away. But they didn't want to hurt Speedy Ghost Crab. Helpful humans were there to protect baby sea turtles. One night, Speedy and other ghost crabs watched baby turtles as they hatched. They were boiling up from the nest. I'd like to catch one of those, Speedy thought. But helpful humans were there protecting the baby turtles. Oh well, there are other things I can eat, Speedy said to himself. I can catch a little mole crab as it dips and dives at the edge of the sea. Speedy looked all around with his club-shaped eye stalks. He was surprised to see a female ghost crab near his burrow. It was Goldie Ghost Crab showing off in her pretty shell. How are you today? Speedy asked nicely. He struck the sand with his claws and made a bubbling sound. Goldie Ghost Crab pretended not to hear him. Speedy then rubbed his legs together to make a special sound, but Goldie still pretended not to hear him. Speedy and Goldie didn't pay any attention to danger. They didn't notice a big swish in the beach grass. Swishing toward the ghost crab was a big rusty raccoon. Just in time, Speedy Ghost Crab spied that big raccoon. Speedy was speedy in knowing how to escape danger. Here, little friend, he said to Goldie, come into my burrow and you will be safe. Goldie was grateful as she slid into Speedy's burrow. Thank you for rescuing me from that scary raccoon. When it was safe to leave, Goldie said goodbye. I remember how, I will remember how you saved me, she said. Speedy hoped that he would see Goldie again, but he was hungry and his thoughts were of food, a little mole crab perhaps. Like all ghost crabs, Speedy liked to hunt for food at night. It was much safer for him. Hungry gulls could easily spot a ghost crab in daylight. They then might grab one up for a tasty treat. Speedy ghost crab didn't like to go into the ocean. He often could get water he needed from wet sand or grass. But in order to catch a little mole crab, he had to creep near the sea. That is where mole crabs live and feed. Speedy caught some mole crabs and ate until he was full. He began to think about that pretty little crab, Goldie Ghost Crab. I wonder where she went, he asked himself. Oh well, it's time to go back home to my burrow, he thought. Speedy was surprised to find Goldie right there near his burrow. I'm glad to see you again, Speedy said. This time, Goldie was friendly. It's nice to be here, she said. The ghost crab couple began to cuddle up in crabby courtship, but a big male ghost crab came along and tried to bother Speedy and Goldie. Speedy was Speedy again in protecting Goldie. Go away, he cried and waved his claws at the big boxy male. That boxy ghost crab waved his claws too, but he soon gave up and decided to go on his way. Later on, Goldie quietly slipped into the ocean, into the sea. Many eggs were under her body. She let them slide into the water where they hatched. Soon there would be more little ghost crabs. They would learn to make burrows in the sand beside the sea. Speedy and Goldie had done their part. Ghost crab life would go on and on and on for more years than anyone could count. Thanks for reading along. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of Speedy Ghost Crab, A Tale of a Beach Dweller. The reading of this book and use of its illustrations was made possible through a special arrangement with publisher Nags Head Art Inc. You can find many of author Suzanne Tate's works in the Myrtle Beach Travel Park General Store. For more information about the author, illustrator, and publisher, check out the website SuzanneTate.com. You can also like their Facebook page, Suzanne Tate's Nature Series, published by Nags Head Art Inc.